Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you're listening around the world, a very warm welcome from London in the UK. Here is today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. I go through every EV article online so you don't have to. My name is Martin Lee and this is your EV News Daily for Tuesday the 10th of April 2018. Firstly, thank you to everyone who sent me some uh, some get well wishes either on Twitter or <laughs> via the website uh, saying I hope you feel better. If you are a daily listener to the podcast, You'll know over the last few days, man flu struck me down, but I'm feeling, thank you for your concern, a thousand times better. Although it has gone to my throat, so occasionally I do sound like my voice is breaking and like I'm a teenage boy again at 14. Ah, painful memories of maths class. Right, well, here we go. If we can get through it, we will start with only one thing that we could talk about today. The most gorgeous car you'll see for a long time if you like fast sports cars. But when is a concept not a concept? I mean, when's vaporware not vaporware? When it's the Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo. You see, the car was developed for virtual races on the PS4, but then, about 11 months ago, Audi said, what if we actually make it? The, the car that we designed in a computer, you know, the kind of the fantasy car. What if we actually built one? Well, they have done. And you'll see it this weekend in conjunction with Formula E, the Rome race this Saturday, April 14th. It'll be deployed as a race taxi. Well, Electric Vehicle News reports the customers and guests of the brand uh, with the four rings. Audi's going to experience Formula E's city circuits as passengers uh, in the Audi e-tron Vision GT. Starting this weekend, employees at their pre-production centre developed and produced a one-of-a-kind car within the space of just 11 months based on an example of the Audi e-tron in the Gran Turismo PlayStation game. Uh, While the Audi e-tron Vision GT has permanent all-wheel drive, it's fully electric and it's got variable power distribution to each of the wheels. Three electric motors on this car, two electric motors drive the rear axle and a third one does the front axle using individual components from the Audi e-tron, which you'll be able to buy very soon. A total output then would put it at 600 kilowatts, that's about 815 horsepower, and with a curb weight of just under 1,500 kilos, it is going to be insanely fast with a power to weight ratio of 1.78 kilograms per horsepower, 50 50 50 weight distribution, of course, if you're building a sports car. Uh, well, this car incorporates so many of the design elements of the new Audi design language. So says Mark Licht. He's the chief designer at Audi. And he says this, I quote, although the design of the virtual vehicle allowed much greater freedom and the creation of concepts which are hard to implement in reality, we didn't want to put a purely fictitious concept on wheels. Our aim was a fully functional car, end quote. And so they've built one. It is gorgeous. Can't wait to see it in action this weekend. Formula E race in Rome. Just one final thought, though. For the ex-racing driver tasked with piloting this car, which, I mean, can you even put a price on it? Don't stick it in the barrier. Right, moving on. And of all the future car projects, the Dyson Company, led by James Dyson, who's worth, you know about £10 billion. Best known for his vacuum cleaners, uh, seems to have grabbed a lot of attention, actually. There's something probably about a strong figurehead, in the way that Elon Musk is as well, that captures people's imagination. And from a practical point of view, once you get past the lazy headlines, which you see everywhere about their cars not sucking like their vacuum cleaners, um, they are very experienced in making mass consumer products. Oh, and battery ones too. If you didn't know, they don't sell vacuum cleaners with cords anymore. They're all batteries. Uh, Well, in a recent New York interview with Wired magazine, uh, James Dyson uh, unveiled a little bit more, which you might not know about, about their future car and battery products. When Wired asked about your development of solid-state batteries being key, uh, James Dyson said this, and I quote, Dieselgate and the pollution in cities was the big changer, uh, to the point where we should be banning diesels immediately in uh, from cities. France and Britain have decided to ban internal combustion engines from 2040, so it is happening. The public want electric cars, I think, despite worries about range. And the fact that they are quiet, and by the way, we ought to make tyres quieter, Uh, there are so many things that we can improve that will make public really want electric cars, end quote. There's something in there that tells me they've been testing his car already, and, (laughs) and the bugbear that he's got, 
he can hear the tyres. Because he kind of he let it slip in that interview quote, didn't he? He's like, oh, we should make quieter tyres. He's been in a secret Dyson electric car, and all you can hear is the tyres. And you can tell it annoys him. All right, moving on, Wired asked this. You now have some heavy hitters in automotive at Dyson, like Ian Robertson, former BMW board member. Uh, well, James Dyson said this, and I quote, he just left BMW. He's been on our board for a number of years. Uh, he's had to leave our board when we announced we were doing a car, but I hope he's going to come back to the board now. We have a very good relationship relationship with BMW. Crucially, we've taken on people from the car industry and mixed them with our people who were naive in this area, but inventive, which I think is a good mix, end quote. One final thing that uh, I saw in this Wired article, the full audio is online, by the way. Uh, Finally, say Wired, you say that your cars are going to be radically different. Can you tell us anything about why they'll be different? And James Dyson said, and he quotes, no. When we started this four years ago, Tesla was very small, Dieselgate hadn't happened, and no one was really considering electric cars. So we are not Johnny-come-latelys on this. Uh, we saw it coming, invested in batteries, and started our project, end quote. And I think that's why so many people are excited, because they can see that Dyson are taking this seriously. They've put a lot of money into it. They've invested billions already in their electric car project, by the way. And they're doing it in a very smart way. And you notice the way that he said, we have a good relationship with BMW. Now, I'm not saying that BMW are going to make their cars, but it would make sense to look at all of the problems that everyone else is having, including Tesla making their own cars, and maybe you do what a company like Jaguar has done, which is design a fantastic car, but get someone else to make it. Maybe Dyson's going to do that. I'm just, I'm just saying that he, he, may, he went out of his way to say that they have a good relationship with BMW. Might mean nothing. You know, should we talk about Jaguar? All right, then. They made an amazing car and designed an incredible car with the I-Pace, but they're not making it. They've outsourced it to a production uh, company called Magna. And now Automotive News reports that Chinese company BAIC, the Beijing Automotive Industry Holdings Company, and Magna uh, have announced they're going to jointly develop the next-gen smart EV architecture for the Chinese market. Uh, well, China is the leading market for electric mobility in the world. 700,000 EVs sold there last year alone in 2017. Now, by 2020, the number of all-electric cars on China's roads is going to be 5 million at this rate, due in part to subsidies and quotas by the Chinese government. Magna Stare is the company, uh, and they were selected by uh, to be BAIC's partner Uh, because of their innovation and their cost-effective solutions, they say, uh, throughout the complete vehicle manufacturing and engineering service. Uh, The agreement was signed two days ago, April the 8th. And that's interesting that even the big Chinese companies are looking around going, "Okay, let's not sink a load of money into something that we can get you to do and finding some experts somewhere in the world to take on those little pain points that just maybe other people have found out the hard way. Right, finally, congratulations to Renault and the Zoe. Gilles Norman, the SVP, Senior Vice President of Electric Vehicle Business Unit at Renault, celebrated the 100,000th fully V Renault Zoe just a few days ago now. He said this, and I quote, Today is a special day. I had the pleasure... I won't do it like that. Mildly insulting as well. Today is a special day. I had the pleasure of participating in the celebration of the 100,000th Renault Zoe that was manufactured in Flin in France. Already 100,000 customers have fallen in love with the Zoe. Launched in 2012, Zoe was fitted with a bigger 41 kilowatt hour battery two years ago, allowing it to go even further. And for enhanced driving pleasure, we equipped uh, we equipped a Zoe. Sorry, I stumbled on the phrase for enhanced driving pleasure. Enhanced for your pleasure. Uh, We equipped Zoe, he says, uh, this month with a more powerful engine, the R110, with 80 kilowatts of power. In addition to being the leading electric vehicle in Europe for the third consecutive year in 2017, Zoe's been voted the best electric car by different juries composed of journalists an impressive number of times. End quote. Well, I would love to spread the word about electric cars. If you can, share this with somebody who might be interested. Listen to every previous episode of the podcast if you want to go and have a look now on itunes google play spotify youtube tune in stitcher uh, we do put the audio on youtube by the way and yes i do keep being asked are we going to do this in vision one day hmm 
<laughs> one day. Uh, and the blog, by the way, evnewsdaily.com. You can subscribe. That means you will get it first and free and automatically. It would mean a lot if you could take two minutes to rate and review wherever you listen to the podcast and come and say hi to me on Twitter at evnewsdaily. Have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you tomorrow. <laughs>